Welcome back to Football Daily, where we're looking at the 10 biggest panic buys of the window. It was a crazy summer of business, but not every move had much thought behind it. Let's get into it. 10. Casemiro to Man United when you're a top club that has been in need of a world-class defensive midfielder for over half a decade, it's likely you'll have to pay over the odds to land him, especially if you're Man United. But given the Red Devils have been trying to move away from signing aging stars on big contracts in recent years, the Casemiro move feels like a regression. And in light of the failed pursuit of Frankie de Jong, as well as United's calamitous first two games of the season, handing the 30-year-old Brazilian a five-year deal on a reported wage close to £400,000 a week carried a definite air of panic. Is he the profile of player United needed? Probably. Will he improve the Red Devils? Almost certainly. But it's also a very real possibility that the club will regret the move in three years' time, when his tiring legs are taking up a huge chunk of the wage bill. Much like with Nemanja Matic and Alexis Sanchez, Casemiro is a short-term signing for a club that claims to be thinking about the long term. 9. Manuel Akanji to Man City is Manuel Akanji really a panic buy? Not completely. But it is puzzling to see the Sky Blues sign a new £15 million centre-half when they already have four quality options available. Part of City's rationale is the early injury scares troubling their defence. Americ Laporte is still not fully fit, while Nathan Ake hobbled off against Newcastle. Neither featured during the club's 6-0 thumping of Nottingham Forest, with 17-year-old Rico Lewis replacing John Stones for his second senior appearance. Akanji's arrival, however, will limit any chance for City's youth defenders going forward. The Swiss international has plenty of top-level pedigree, having made 158 appearances for Borussia Dortmund, and he regularly features among the best players in the Bundesliga for passes completed and passes into the final third, exactly what City admire. But if reports are true, City have handed the 27-year-old a contract worth a 11 million euros per season until 2027. That is a lot of money for a fifth choice centre half, who has missed a full season's worth of action with various issues since 2018. 8. Morgan Gibbs White to Nottingham Forest like Akanji, Nottingham Forest signing of Morgan Gibbs-White isn't a panic buy in every sense. Manager Steve Cooper has worked with him before, first as manager of England's under-17s, and then during the players' loan spell at Swansea, which was sadly cut short by injury, with the pair developing a close understanding as a result. Furthermore, it's widely known that Gibbs-White was Cooper's top target this summer. So what makes this move qualify for this list? Very simply, it's the fee. Forrest's extensive business this summer has seen them pick up some quality players at good rates, namely Remo Freuler and Oro Mangala in midfield. However, the club's ambitions for Premier League survival saw them exploited in the case of Gibbs White, with Wolves collecting £26.6 million, which could rise to over £42 million with add-ons for the 22-year-old. That's a hell of a lot to pay for someone who has had less than 1,500 minutes of top-flight experience prior to this summer, even if staying up would more than make up for it. Given Notorious overpay as Everton spent around and half that on Dwight McNeil, who is the same age but far more proven, it's hard to say that Forrest haven't been exploited here. Let's hope it pays off. 7. Mark Kukurea to Chelsea Todd Bowley promised to invest heavily in the Chelsea squad and sure enough he has gone wild, even threatening at one point to crack Real Madrid's record of £300 million spent in a single window. They have made some quality and expensive additions but arguably the wildest was the £59 million dropped on Brighton's Mark Cucurea. Make no mistake, the Spaniard had an excellent campaign with Brighton last term. The flying fullback was a constant threat on the left flank, producing 2.8 crosses and 6 progressive carries per 90, elite numbers by any measure. Defensively, he was very strong too, producing some of the most tackles, pressures and blocks in the division. With that in mind, it seems odd to call Cucurea a panic buy, but put simply, Chelsea didn't need a new left back, let alone one for £60 million. Ben Chilwell may be suffering from injury problems, but he's a proven England international capable of providing serious threat in the final third. His 12-goal involvements in a Chelsea shirt is 10 more than Cucurea has managed in the past two seasons. The Blues saw Man City gunning for the Spaniard and decided to ruin their plans, all with money that could have been better spent elsewhere. 6. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang to Chelsea now for another blue, as few were expecting Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang to return to the Premier League just six months after he left Arsenal. But following the departure of Romelu Lukaku and a faltering start to the season, Thomas Tuchel has clearly felt the need to add a striker to his squad. And given Aubameyang scored 79 goals in just 95 appearances under him at Borussia Dortmund, it's not hard to see why they have targeted the Gabonese legend. He's also far from finished, 
scoring 11 in 13 La Liga starts last term, taking almost three shots in the box each game, and averaging a very decent 0.59 expected goals per 90. So in footballing terms, this is far from a bad move. But considering they have been forced to pay a 14 million euro fee and stump up sizable wages for an aging star who left Arsenal for nothing in January, it doesn't feel like a particularly well thought out move. If he can deliver 15 league goals for the Blues this term, then Aubameyang's signing will be rightly considered an unqualified success. But the circumstances surrounding his arrival cannot be ignored. Chelsea's summer activity has been unpredictable and at times baffling. 5. Salernitana's Business Last season, the Italian Mino Salernitana made headlines with their dramatic late escape, surviving the drop from Serie A with a remarkable four wins and three draws from their final eight matches. Also part of the narrative was their frantic transfer business across the campaign, with almost 30 players arriving on short and long-term deals to try and push Salernitana to safety. With their future in the top flight secure, you'd have thought that I Granata would have taken a more measured approach this summer to recruitment, but instead they have gone wild again, signing a further 20 players. That includes almost £40 million spent on the likes of Matteo Lovato from Atalanta and Domagog Braderich from Lille, plus Tony Vilheda, Bula Diai and Antonio Kondreva arriving on loan. It's a truly baffling turnover of players, which will be vindicated if Salernitana can survive again. A win and two draws from their opening four games is not a bad start, four points better off than they were at this point last season. But manager Davide Nicola has another huge job on getting his hastily assembled squad to gel once more. Four. Casper Dolberg to Sevilla In Spain, the pressure is growing on Sevilla. One point from their opening three matches is their worst start to La Liga in 41 years, while last season they blew their biggest chance at winning the division since 1945, limping home in fourth. Hulun Lopetegui is certainly feeling the heat. That said, he hasn't been helped by Sevilla's messy summer business. The club sold both Jules Kunde and Diogo Carlos for over £70 million and replaced them with the inexperienced Tangi Niansu and Marcao from Galatasaray, not the elite defensive pairing required for a Champions League club. The arrival of Isco is hardly worth mentioning either, with the 30 year old contributing just six goal involvements in the past three years at Madrid. The club transfer guru Monchi needed to give Lopetegui the ammunition to kickstart their campaign, but we don't think Kasper Dolberg is that. A lone signing from Nice, the Danish forward has cobbled together just 12 goals in Liga since 2020 and leaves the French outfit to make way for Nicola Pepe. It's yet another mediocre addition to the severe squad, who will struggle to make top four at their current rate of decline. 3. William to Fulham Of the busiest Premier League clubs on deadline day, Fulham announced a number of moves in the final hours, including the loan signings of Levin Kazawa and Dan James. But while both can be argued as desperate last-minute moves to bolster a limited squad, the acquisition of 34-year-old William is more telling. Hugely disappointing in his final Premier League season at Arsenal, where he scored just once in 1,400 minutes and saw his dribbles drop from 2.2 to 0.8 per 90, the Brazilian forward hardly set the world alight following a move back to boyhood club Corinthians, making just 16 league starts across 12 months in Sao Paulo. Marco Silva will be hoping Williams' Premier League experience can boost the Cottagers' chances of breaking their yo-yo cycle, but such signings are always a risk for lower table clubs. 2. Warrant fans to Leicester City after a summer of total inaction at Leicester City, their troubles deepen with Chelsea wrenching Wesley Fofana from their grasp. Leicester may have banked a massive £74 million from his departure, but with one day of the window left, it created a headache that Brendan Rodgers really didn't need. Leicester quickly found a replacement, signing Warwick Fuzz from Reims in a £50 million deadline day deal. But the Belgian defender is really no match for Fofana. To his credit, Fass has been a crucial component at Reims over the past two years. Last season, he ranked third in the entirety of Ligue 1 for clearances, and was a threat in the box, scoring four, including three headers. However, the 24-year-old is very much a work in progress, with his passing, ball carrying and tackles all needing improving. And the Premier League can be an unforgiving environment for someone looking to develop, especially with the Foxes under pressure to produce results. It is also telling that Fass was meant to be joining Torino before the Italian club pulled the plug. Leicester needed a defender and they got one, but their problems look far from over. 1. Arter to Liverpool these days, it's pretty much unheard of for Liverpool to be forced into the market, with English giants often happy to walk away from deals for potential world beaters if they aren't quite happy with their terms and willing to wait for their top targets. But while the acquisition of Arta is only a loan deal, it certainly doesn't seem like one that Jurgen Klopp had in mind at the start of the window. 
Insistent until very recently that he didn't need to sign an extra midfielder this summer, his side's inconsistent displays at the start of the campaign have forced them back into the market, and signing someone who has failed to live up to expectations at two of Europe's biggest clubs is hardly without its risks. The former Barca man has failed to make 20 league starts in a season since arriving in Europe in 2018, and while his ball retention skills have always been very decent, he's rarely excelled in the other areas of his game. In Klopp's system, he may simply need to be competent to work, but given the Reds previously had the likes of Schuermann many in Sangara on their wish list, Arta is a serious downgrade. So guys, that's all we've got time for on today's video. That was 10 biggest panic buys of the window, but which other moves do you think reeked of desperation? Let me know in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed this video, why don't you check out our deadline day content from yesterday all over Football Daily, and I'll catch you next time.